So I'm curious, what is your least favorite chore? I can tell you without hesitation what mine is, and that's laundry. Although I really don't like doing laundry and it's something that I really struggle with, I do happen to have a really pretty laundry room. However, I haven't shared it on my blog up until recently, and there are two major reasons for that. So today I'm going to share some of the biggest design mistakes I've ever made and teach you how you can prevent them. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Nina Hendrick and I help women create homes that combine comfort and beauty so that they can spend their time focusing on what's truly important and that's making meaningful memories with their families. Before I jump into sharing the new laundry room, I want to give you a bit of background about this project. Our laundry room started out on the first floor right when you walk into our home from the garage. I'm not sure who ever came up with this type of layout, but it's really common in houses around here and it's absolutely horrible. Not only do I already dislike doing laundry, but now picture my kids piling their book bags, their boots, their coats, all of the things right in this space along with laundry baskets and just, it was an absolute nightmare. So pretty quickly we knew that we wanted to transform this into a much more functional mudroom. And so that's what we did. I absolutely love our new mudroom space and I wouldn't change a thing. It is so nice to have that there and everything can go neatly in a place rather than being in the middle of the way. But that left us with where should we put our laundry room? Well, we had a really good idea already. This was one of the major selling points when we bought this house because look at all of that bonus space. However, it was really kind of awkward how you accessed it. You had to go into a little vestibule leading into our closet and then walk through another hallway that kind of wrapped around the closet. Super strange. So Mac almost immediately proposed going straight through that vestibule and creating a new hallway into what would later become our primary bedroom. When we found out we were expecting our third child, that's exactly what we did. We began to carve out the space and I say it like it, it makes it sound easy, but it was a big project. It was a lot of framing, a lot of removing of wallpaper, which was a nightmare. This wallpaper wasn't the normal kind that you can steam off. It was kind of like a vinyl wallpaper, we think, and it just really was, It would, trust me when I say it was a difficult project. And so this was the new layout. And with the new layout, it made space for a laundry room and also a closet for me. I actually have less clothes than my husband, so it made sense for me to take the smaller side in the laundry room. And so for a long time, our laundry room looked like this, which made a task that I already don't like doing a little bit more of a punishment. <laughs> it looked like a dungeon. And as you can see, that wallpaper was really difficult to remove and it came off in like the tiniest little pieces. So we just kind of left it like this as life happened. We welcomed our daughter. There were just other priorities in our second floor laundry room was not one of them. And then eventually we tackled the project and we turned it into the room that you see today. I have had people ask if I regret having a laundry room on the second floor, if it has caused any problems with leaking into our garage, but even though my washer did leak last year, it didn't actually penetrate the floor. I don't have any regrets about having our laundry room on the second floor. I'm completely happy with being able to just transfer laundry easily and quickly back to bedrooms. So while this room is now gorgeous, I do have those things that I would do differently if I did the project today. So I wanna share those with you so that you don't make the same mistakes. So the major mistake that I made has to do with the layout. I found this really beautiful inspiration photo where the sink was between the washer and dryer. And I am a huge fan of symmetry. I love when things are even. And so we put a farmhouse sink between our washer and dryer. Well, the reality of that is that although it isn't that far, it's just far enough to make transferring laundry a major pain. I drop half of the wet clothes on the way from the washer to the dryer and it's just kind of inconvenient. Is it the end of the world? No, but I didn't want to put these pictures out into the world without telling you if I could do it all over again, I would definitely put the washer and the dryer beside one another and then I'd put my sink lower so that it was at normal sink height. Right now, the sink is built so that it's level with the top of the washer and dryer and the countertop is just up high to compensate for that. It's just not a convenient height for being able to do anything. I usually soak different clothes in it or I use it to wash out paintbrushes and it kind of, 
it's just a weird, awkward height. So if I could do it all over again, not only would I put the washer and dryer together, but I would put that sink over beside them at a normal level. And my husband tells me it would have been much easier to plumb this <laughs> if I had designed it that way. So just for reference, that's also something you might wanna take into consideration too. And the other mistake that I made on the laundry side was having butcher block countertops. Now, we didn't have a big budget for this project. We did it all with Ikea cabinets and just kind of hacked them to make them work. So we really didn't spend much on this project and butcher block countertops were what I had room in my budget for. If I could do it all over again, I would try to pick a different material, maybe concrete. We were already kind of wearing ourselves thin at this point. I tried to do this room for a one room challenge and that just did not work out. We could not stick to that timeline. So that's why we went with the butcher block, but it has, even with a top coat, it has scratched so easily and it's needing to be redone already. So if I could choose a different material, I would have. Now, when I put this out to my Instagram community, there were two things that people guessed that I had done wrong, which actually weren't the answer, but then made me realize I should probably address them. One was having an open shelf. I don't regret having an open shelf. Just like in the kitchen, I realized that open shelving is kind of controversial. I think because of dust, um, I don't really see it being that much of a problem. It's no problem in the laundry room, just like it's not a problem in our kitchen. I love it and I'm happy with it and I wouldn't change that. The other factor that people thought might be an issue was that they thought that the drying rack might not open up all the way. And that actually isn't the case. I am not able to use the lower rung simply because with the layout of the room I had to hang it above the countertop, but I don't really ever need to. I haven't missed not being able to use those lower rungs, so it fully functions and it opens as much as it's designed to open. The shelf actually stops short and it's hard to show that in every picture because of perspective, but the, the shelf is cut short so that the drying rack can open. And now to discuss a few design elements about this room before we move on to the closet side. We planked the walls using the same method as in our dining room, which I have a whole tutorial on my blog teaching you how to do that. It's not true shiplap, it's actually just really thin plywood that we painted and we gave it the look. So it's kind of like faux shiplap. And we've done this in a few rooms now and I absolutely love it. It's an easy method. It looks kind of rustic and kind of cottagey, which obviously is right up my alley. One factor about this room is that it actually gets a ton of natural light. So here I am complaining about laundry and I'm actually soaking up vitamin D while I'm doing my laundry. So I'm really lucky in that and I've been able to get this plant, this trailing plant, to really do well in this room. So that is another thing that's a bonus about this room. It's really great for greenery and greenery always cheers everybody up. <laughs> Now onto the closet side. We used the Ikea Hemnes bookcases to create this closet, which was an idea that I had after looking at expensive closet systems and thinking, well, A, we can't afford this, but I do really like the way that it's set up. And I like how there's cabinetry and I like how pretty it looks. And so I was looking through the Ikea catalog and I thought maybe we could do a hack with their bookcases and it worked. I mean, I measured wrong, <laughs> another design mistake I made in this space. So the side where my long dresses hang isn't quite as wide as I had expected, but I actually don't have a big wardrobe. I'm a capsule wardrobe girl. I have way less clothes than my husband. So it, it worked out really well. I don't need any more space. The center cabinet originally had glass doors and they didn't give you the ability to hide anything. So I got kind of sick of that over the years and recently I put caning on the back side. Now I shared a full tutorial on Instagram of how I did this and it's coming to the blog soon, but it has made such a great difference in this room and I'm able to hide things that just aren't styled and pretty behind the doors without really worrying about it, which has been super convenient. And the last factor to mention on the closet side, I really struggled finding baskets that fit the Ikea Hemnes bookcases. They have different cubes and baskets made for their other systems, but not this one. And so after years of searching, I found the water hyacinth basket from Pottery Barn actually fits perfectly. And so I bought four of them and I might buy a couple more. They store things like my scarves and just kind of extra odds and ends that don't have a place. They have been 
a lifesaver and I didn't actually get to share that when I originally photographed the room so I'm excited if you've been looking for baskets for these bookcases to pass along that hint. It's always so frustrating when you can't find something the right size or the right product for what you're looking for, isn't it? <laughs> and so that's it. That is my laundry room in a nutshell. I can't promise that I will ever enjoy doing laundry, it's unlikely, <laughs> but at least I have a pretty space to do it in. If you enjoyed this video, I would love to invite you to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe and follow along as I continue to chronicle our renovations and room makeovers and organizing, entertaining, and other fun homemaking tips. And that's all for today. Until next time, friends.